Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Business Podcast, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Robert Stupak on the line, and he's a discoverer and adventurer over at rockwellauthentication.com and also drakestreasure.com. Robert, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Adam. And how are you doing this afternoon? I'm fantastic, and I want to know, where did I go wrong in life to not get a title like Discover and Adventure? I mean, how cool is that? Tell me that, Robert. Well, the, these titles have been earned over a lifetime, and uh, they, they don't come easily. That's what I would tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I know it always sounds better, but I, I was looking at your website on uh, drakestreasure.com, and I'm like, yeah, you probably went through some some work to get that title. I see you see the trucks and the rocks and all the excavating there. I'm like, yeah, you went through some work. Um, so that being said, today I want to get into some of your projects that you're working on. And uh, um, specifically, I mean, we're, we'll, of course, get into Drake's Treasure and your website. Um, but I do want to also get into the uh, Rockwell painting and patent. I mean, where do you want to start with that one? Well, I could start by telling you the story of how these, uh, the patent came about. Uh, back in 1999, I purchased a painting from a fellow who had been an art dealer for many years, and he was selling off his art collection because he was already in his 80s at that time. And uh, I visited with him a couple of times, and then one afternoon I asked him if he had uh, if any particular painting that he thought would be a good investment, because I was looking to make an investment in art at the time. And he, he went upstairs and he came downstairs with the painting and he said, this is a Norman Rockwell original painting. And he said, I bought it in the 1960s and I bought it from the Associated American Artists Gallery in Manhattan. And it was a beautiful painting. And what it is, is Norman Rockwell's studio, which burned down in 1943. Now, many people that know uh, much about Mr. Rockwell is he lost a lot of valuable props and paintings and a lot of his own personal memorabilia when the studio burned down in 1943. Uh, it was a very devastating loss for him. Now, I purchased the painting, believe it or not, for $40,000 back in 1999, which was a handy sum of money. Mm -hmm. And he told me, uh, the, the fellow who sold it to me, told me that if I held on to it for a few years, it would be worth a lot more money because Norman Rockwell's paintings were going on a national tour at that time. So that tour, I believe, began in the year 2000 or in the early 2000s, and it was a national tour. And so when the tour came to an end, I tried to uh, have the painting authenticated. But the problem was that the signature, which is signed simply Rockwell on my painting, doesn't match the Norman Norman Rockwell uh, stencil type signatures that you see on his, you know, on quite a, a wide variety of his paintings. Mm -hmm. So I gave the painting to my father, and he took it to the Norman Rockwell Museum up in Massachusetts, and they were unable to authenticate it. Number one, but number two, they also said that it did not look like Norman Rockwell's signature. So I, I hung the painting across from my desk, and I had it there for probably 10 years or so. And then one morning, I got up and take, took a look at it, and I noticed that in the lattice work of the bridge, which is the focal point in the center of the painting, I could see the initials NR. And I was like, wow, I wonder if uh, Norman Rockwell was known for hiding his name or his pictures uh, or, or his initials in the painting. And this was not known. I could not find any research about mm. it. So I started to do my own work on this. And at first, I, I blew up the signature. I took a photograph of the painting and I blew up the signature and, and fit it, eventually fit it right onto that bridge in the lattice work. And I, I had to study all different kinds of things about Norman Rockwell. And... People don't know, but uh, most people who went to the doctor when uh, they were small had seen issues of Boys Life magazine. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. And one of the regular features of Boys Life magazine was hide, uh, find, find the hidden picture in the picture. And Norman Rockwell had been an editor of Boys Life magazine at one time. Wow, no way, I so, didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. And so, I, you know, I started from that basis. And then I started to do some more research into his life. He had not only been that editor, he was very famous for being the, uh, uh, the, an illustrator or an artist for the Saturday Evening Post for many years. And in the course of my research, I found out that when World War II started, Norman Rockwell was in the military for a short period of time. And I began to look up what was high technology in the late 1930s and early 1940s. And what I found was that the, something called steganography, steganography, which is the art of hiding a picture within a picture, was a, a tactic used by the U.S. government. And when they, when they put out posters, and there were many wartime posters to you know, support the war, and a Rosie the Riveter poster is one of these very famous posters. And so I had to do a lot of research and find out what techniques and what colors were used in hiding a picture within a picture. And by doing all of this and getting a particular article that gave me the, the settings that were necessary, I came up with a way to uh, take a Norman Rockwell picture uh, it, it works off a photograph of a, any kind of Norman Rockwell painting painted after 1942 and putting it through the process, which I have patented, it miraculously comes up with his initials highlighted. And there is also some other information like the, the date and his name in every painting painted after 1942. Whoa. And I patented this process. Yeah, it's quite amazing. Uh, people could take a look at the website, which is rockwellauthentication.com, and they can see not only my painting, but how this works on all of his other paintings. Until he uh, passed away in 1978, every painting contains the same uh, initials, NR or NPR for his middle name, uh, and the date. So that's this is what that, amazing. And that that's how you get your title right there. Like nobody else sees that except for you. That's absolutely amazing. Um so what is I mean obviously you still talk to the, the you you've been in contact with the foundation other things. I mean what have people said about this? Like you've authenticated other people's paintings like what's the consensus on this? Super interesting. Well, you know, the art world, they would like to go everything traditional. There are a couple of companies out there that authenticate art via scientific methods. And I've been in touch with them because I want to, obviously the painting that I purchased back there in 1999, this process works on it. And the initials NR are very, very clear when you put it through the process. Uh, Just the other day, I sent off the painting to New York to have uh, another type of authentication where they look at the brush strokes and they measure the type of paint and I want to get an independent verification because I would like to sell my painting. I purchased it as an investment. Here I've held it now 21 years, and I would like to sell it at auction. And because of the subject matter of the painting, which is his burned studio, this is very important to uh, collectors and museums. It's uh, probably one of the most important Norman Rockwell paintings, although it's not his uh, classic uh, magazine cover uh, paintings, which people think of. Now, the largest collectors of Norman Rockwell paintings are George Lucas and Steven Spielberg. And they are opening a museum down in Los Angeles within the next couple of years that's going to highlight Norman Rockwell's works. And the other uh, potential buyers for my patent and my painting would be insurance companies because Norman Rockwell paintings go out on loan, you know, they go out to exhibits. And if you're an insurance company and you're insuring that museum or these paintings for a certain amount of money, you want to make sure that it's an original Norman Rockwell artwork going out. 
you want to make sure it's an original Norman Rockwell piece of art on the way back. So this is a very simple method. It takes only five to ten minutes to authenticate the painting, and that way, you know, the insurance company is guaranteed that they would be, you know, that it is the right painting going in and out. Man, that's awesome. What a story, Robert. Um, so that being said, if somebody wants to learn more about um, what you're doing there or also at uh, Drake's Treasure, I mean, what's the best way for them to connect and to get more info? Well, you could just take a look at uh, the website, which is rockwellauthentication.com, and you can contact me through that site. And my other uh, adventure is called Drake's Treasure. Now, there is a book on this. It's called Drake's Treasure, a real-life adventure, which is available on Amazon under, under Drake's Treasure and under my name. And there's also a website, drakestreasure.com. And this is a very, very interesting story uh, about Sir Francis Drake's landing at Nova Albion in 1579, which... It's a long time ago, but Nova Albion happens to be in Marin County, California. And what's interesting about this is not only the treasure story, but the fact that I was out to resolve all of the unanswered questions about Sir Francis Drake's visit in 1579. And it involves something called the Plate of Brass, which is a small plaque that Sir Francis Drake left when he was here, which claimed the land for England. And Spain actually, you know, owned California for a long time, but it was actually first founded and discovered by Sir Francis Drake. So it's a, it's a very interesting book. It comes in both Kindle and paperback formats. I recommend the Kindle because what I've done is uh, put pictures in it, a lot of pictures. And it works best with a Kindle. You just, if you see a, something that's highlighted, you click on it. It takes you right to the picture of what I'm talking about. And then you click on another link and it takes you right back to where you were in the book. So I'd recommend the Kindle format as opposed to the paperback, but you could look at either one. Man, that's awesome. So, Robert, uh, thank you for coming on today and tell, teaching us more about what you're doing over at uh, rockwellauthentication.com and also drakestreasure.com. And you have me in mind to get in an adventure myself. I'll, I don't know if I'm ever going to earn that title, Discover an Adventure, but you sure are one. And I saw those, that picture of you with all your research on drakestreasure.com, and it's, it's pretty outstanding. Everybody listening, definitely go, go check out that website and see what Robert's up to. You won't be disappointed there. Um, and uh, also, if you're listening to this for the first time, don't forget, subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes store, and also if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, uh, Mission Matters Business, give us a subscribe there, and also leave us some comments on the video. Love to know what kinds of things you're working on and projects you have going on in your life. And uh, Robert, thanks again for coming on the show.